Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, is we're discussing yet again the COVID-19 outbreak and the Thai immigration response to that outbreak, most notably the so-called Thai visa extensions or automatic Thai visa extensions, or also referred to as Thai visa waivers. I've also seen this referred to as a Thai visa amnesty. All of this sort of is talking about the same issue, which is folks who came into Thailand have gotten stuck or stranded and can't get back out, presumably, or they cannot, they're dealing with extending their status lawfully here in Thailand, so maintaining lawful status here in the kingdom. Not going into overstay is, is the main concern here. So as we went into, and I got some flack for a video last week, where I was discussing prior information given out by the head of Thai immigration, and it did not seem to fully comport with how they were actually, well, I should say my video did not seem to fully comport with how they were actually implementing Thai immigration rules, especially with respect to in-person applications for these extensions. So for most people, they don't need to come in person to apply for this automatic extension. And as we'll get into later, we're now seeing where the rubber hits the road on this. We're seeing that the devil is in the details. It should be noted, as I noted in prior videos, this all came about in a matter of a couple of days. The policy was implemented quite quickly. As I've noted before, the announcement itself was quite vaguely worded, and it's subject to interpretation as well as administrative discretion with respect, with respect to enforcement by immigration officers on the ground. And I will get into the details of how that can play out, and I'll get into further detail in later videos that will likely be coming out later this week with respect to this. But understand this first off. Those of you who are in tourist visa status, if you had a Thai tourist visa and came into Thailand, if you have a Thai visa exemption, now for most people that's going to be a 30-day stamp that was granted on arrival, they didn't get a visa, they didn't go through an embassy or any of that, they just got a 30-day stamp on arrival in Thailand. And it may not necessarily be a 30-day stamp. Certain countries have bilateral relationships with Thailand that dictate different terms by which those folks enter in visa-exempt status. For example, some nationalities enter with 14 days, some enter with 90 days. It depends on the specific bilateral agreement between that nation and Thailand. But for, for this purpose, just understand, if you came into Thailand, and you were granted a visa exemption on arrival, this applies to you. And finally, those who were granted a visa on arrival when coming into Thailand. So that's a tourist visa granted at the time you arrive in Thailand. For any of those people, folks covered by any of those statuses, whose status expires between the 26th of March and the 30th of April, you folks are granted an automatic stay, if you will, from being considered in overstay until April 30th. So as of today, it's, we're, we're making this video Monday the 13th of April. If you would have otherwise gone into overstay today and you had that one of those status, then you will not go into overstay. You're just sort of waived. You're granted an amnesty and your visa is considered extended until April the 30th. However, the devil is in the details on this, and I got a lot of flack for one video we made where we were talking about a prior Bangkok Post article that was quoting directly the Thai head of Thai immigration, the immigration chief here in Thailand, and I interpreted his remarks along with the vagueness of the announcement to mean that you initially had to go get a visa extension stamp pursuant to this, amnesty policy, and then thereafter it would be rolled over and, and those folks would be re-examined, well, the policy of the amnesty would be re-examined on a monthly basis. I was wrong about that, I made a video and clarified how I was wrong about that, and the, it, it proved that you did not have to show up in person to go ahead and just be granted an amnesty, that was not required. That being said, I didn't take down the video, and some people have asked me why. One of the reasons is I believed it was correct at the time I made it, 
I believed it was correct at the time it was posted. Now, shortly thereafter, things changed. But also, I left it up because the analysis in it bears on to what we're now dealing with with respect to certain kinds of folks who are stuck in status here moving forward, or who are stuck in kind of a limbo here, I should say, moving forward. And this is one of those instances where, strangely, it kind of called up experiences I had in law school, most notably when law professors would tell us, you know, you folks that don't read what are called the dissenting opinions. So in many of these appeals court cases, you'll have, you'll have the main holding, which the majority of the court will have come together and written a singular opinion on a main holding in a case. But then you'll have judges who disagreed with that holding, and they'll write their dissenting opinion in some cases. Now, that dissenting opinion does not necessarily, it's not, it's not binding by any stretch of the imagination. But as law professors told me way back when, the dissenting opinion can provide a lot of definition, and it can provide a lot of insight into the thinking that went into the final decision. In this case, we're not talking about a dissent. I was taking information may, uh, that was quoted from the head of Thai immigration somewhat out of context, and frankly, I was misapplying it. Now, I came by that misapplication honestly because it was under kind of a harsh time constraint, and also the announcement itself was rather vague. So in, in the totality of the circumstances, I made the interpretation that I did. But those remarks are now coming home to sort of roost, if you will, because I think one of the main things that he was talking about, specifically with the issue of folks who expired, but then obtained an embassy stamp. And I'm gonna get into this in another video in great detail, but there are folks whose visa went into expiration before the 26th of March, before this window, the 26th to the 30th, came about. And those folks are in a qualitatively different position in my opinion, and apparently in the opinion of immigration officers that we have heard about from clients and from folks sending us information by email or comments on our YouTube channel, the immigration officers are taking the position, at least in some offices, that folks who had to get an embassy letter in order to maintain their status, so it was they were granted this sort of embassy letter, and hold on, I've got my notes here, and they were basically granted a it was a stamp that basically said, until further notice or under consideration. It was basically a stamp that just said, you know, pending, for lack of a better term. Those folks, again, whose visas expired prior to the 26th of March, but who were granted, a, they got a letter from their embassy requesting that Thai immigration maintain their status. It appears that those folks will not be necessarily covered under this amnesty. So understand, if you went and got an embassy letter and you got your visa extended, and let's say you got it extended to the 21st of April, for example, that type of scenario will result in a situation where you may need to still go talk to immigration in order to keep your status maintained. Based on the remarks from the head of Thai immigration in that Bangkok Post article I previously cited, it seems that this was thought out. And I think that that was the quotation that I apparently took out of context. That's what they were referring to as these folks who had previously gotten an embassy letter, extended their status into the window, but were expiring in the window. Those folks are not treated, it looks to me, the same way that folks who came in on a tourist visa and just sort of naturally expired, for lack of a better term, within the window. So that's the first thing to understand. We're seeing the rubber hit the road with respect to this. Meanwhile, it now also appears different immigration offices are taking a different position on non-immigrant visas. So as I've said in previous videos, and I continue to say, if you are going to extend anyway between March, April, and May, go ahead and keep extending the way you always have been. It appears to us that nothing is gonna change with respect to protocols for continuation of extension procedures. So if you're going to extend, you're planning on extending, if you remain in extension status, continue in extension status. However, there are folks, most notably those who have non-immigrant multiple entry visas. These are folks who have a one-year sticker in their passport, but who 
receive 90 days of status upon entry to Thailand, multiple entry non-immigrant visas. We see this a lot in the context of a multi-entry non-immigrant B visa or a multi-entry non-immigrant O visa. That's quite frequent. Uh, and the O visa may be based on marriage. Uh, in some cases, it may be raising a child here in Thailand. Various reasons for that. Even multiple entry OA visas, but I'm not going to get into that. We're going to do a video specifically on retirement visas because they're a little bit different. But the thing to take away from this video is if you're stamped in, if you had been stamped in on a multi-entry non-immigrant visa and you were granted a 90-day stamp, it seems that it, different immigration offices are taking a different tack on this and interpreting this differently depending on the office you go to. Where we have been talking to Changwatana more directly than we've been talking to much of any other office, although we have talked to Chonburi in recent days, and I think Samut Prakan. In fact, I think one of my staff mentioned Samut Prakan the other day. I, I am sorry, I'm getting a little, little frazzled with respect to everything I can remember. But the, the multi-entry 90-day visas, you may not necessarily be granted or covered, if you will, under this new amnesty. So you either need to contact your local office or contact an immigration professional that deals with Thai immigration regularly and ascertain exactly where you stand. It may be a good idea, especially for those of you in a multi-entry B or a multi-entry O, to be looking at your options for extending as that may be the only way out of getting stuck in an overstay trap that you didn't intend to get stuck into. Now, finally, sort of to culminate with respect to this video, these are the things you need to take away. Tourists, as previously stated, if you expire in the 26th to 30th window, March 26th to April 30th, you're covered. There's an amnesty. You don't need to really do much of anything. If you're one of these folks that had a tourist visa but it expired prior to the 26th, then you had to use an embassy letter to maintain your status, you may not be covered. And it's looking more and more like that. Specifically, you need to take further action. If you're in a non-immigrant visa of some sort, you probably need to take further action. Now, depending on your circumstances, it may change the type of action you need to take. But those with a multi-entry non-immigrant visa where you got 90 days of status at your last entry, you may want to be looking at your extension options. Those who are extending, looks like you're going to want to go ahead and continue extending the way you otherwise would have done.